Hello, and thank you for joining us here today at High Water Studio for our continuing coverage of review material for the Fundamentals of Engineering exam for Environmental Engineers. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about pipe flow and specifically using the Hazen Williams equation, um, how it's used, what it's used for, and um, some of the important aspects of when you would want to use it. So there's a number of different similar equations. The Hazen Williams equation is one of the easier to use equations, so I think you're more likely to see that on the FE. It's also something that's used very often in environmental engineering because of its relative simplicity to other types of similar equations. Most of these, pretty much almost all of these are empirical relationships. So basically that means this is not theoretical, you know, they didn't, they didn't use fluid mechanics to figure this out. They basically did multiple experiments using different pipe materials at different velocities and measuring the head loss, probably using pitot tubes at the time and they just do this over and over again, get a bunch of data and fit a curve to it. Basically is how these work. And the Hayes and Williams equation specifically was developed in 1906 by uh, Alan Hazen and Gardner Stewart Williams. Um, and it basically, it, it relates those three uh, variables, velocity, pipe material, which is basically the roughness of the material, and the head loss that results from that. So when you have increasing velocity, you're going to have increasing head loss, and if you have increasing roughness of the material, obviously you're going to have increasing head loss too. Now typically these are used in industry most often, at least in my opinion, for sizing pipe diameters. If you're going to have a thousand foot of pipe that you're going to be putting in, you need to select a pipe diameter that is going to have a velocity that is not going to have, you know, this kind of head loss that's going to basically drop below 25 psi, at least in the US, because then you get into fire suppression, um, you know, kind of regulations there that, you, that you're not meeting. So you want to make sure that you're accounting for that using a pipe diameter that's going to have a low enough velocity that you're not having too much head loss. Okay, so pretty much all of these equations, they have some kind of roughness coefficient. In the case of the Hayes and Williams, what makes this easier to use is that your roughness coefficient, defined by C typically in the equations, is a function only of the material. So the Reynolds number, you know, laminar, turbulent flow, viscosity, none of that stuff matters. It's really just the pipe material. So it's very easy to just pick a C number out of a table and just run with it, right? Um, but the limitation that comes from that is that it's only valid for water. It's only valid at standard viscosity, which, you know, one of those might be an issue. The other probably isn't, right? So if you're talking about, obviously, if you're, if you're not talking about water, Hayes and Williams is out, you know, out of the question. If you're talking about a solution of water, maybe you've got suspended material um, or some other sort of you know, constituents within water as a solvent that might change its viscosity, you know, then you're starting to deviate away from where Hayes and Williams would be um, you know, reliable. Uh, in terms of if you if it is water, if it is potable water or like water in a fire su um, su uh, suppression system, this is great. Um, and the viscosity differences based on temperature are so negligible that really they can just be ignored, right? So if you're talking about water in a pipe, Hayes and Williams is really a great way to go. Okay, so here's our here's our equation, Hayes and Williams equation. This is velocity 
is going to be equal to a coefficient for units, a unit correction coefficient, based on whether you're using US or metric. And then you have your roughness coefficient. And then you have your hydraulic um, radius, RH. And that's going to be to the 0 0.63. And then you have your hydraulic slope, which is to the 0 0.54. And all these numbers, again, you know, it's empirical. These don't have any real theoretical meaning. Um, you know, they're just basically fitting the slope. And how you fit that slope is going to depend on which kind of unit you're using, feet for US or meters for metric. And so um, we'll come back to some of these, but just to explain some of the more, maybe a little bit more complicated variables here, the hydraulic radius is going to be your cross-sectional area divided by your wetted perimeter. Now in pipes, this is not usually that difficult compared to like open channel flow. And to be clear though, hydraulic radius is not used only in Hayes and Williams. It's used in different methods, different types of equations for open channel flow and a lot of other things depend on hydraulic radius. But, you know, if you think about a pipe, the cross-sectional area is just going to be your area of the pipe if it's flowing full. So we'll say A, or if you have something like, you know, a half full pipe, then you're gonna have one half A, one half of your area. Now your wetted perimeter is the material the perimeter of the material that's being wetted by the fluid is conveying. If that make, hopefully that makes sense. So in the case of a pipe that is flowing full, it is just going to be this full perimeter, right? In the case of a pipe that's half full, you're going to have, again, just one half of this perimeter. And it's going to be this perimeter um, that is being wetted by the fluid, you're not going to be counting any part of this perimeter that is exposed to atmosphere, right? Because it's not contacting the material. It's not, there's no frictional loss there, which is really what this is accounting for. So, let me just, to be clear, put that there. Um, and then the last part of this equation is your hydraulic slope which is your head loss per length of pipe. So if you think about, you know, if you have a thousand foot of pipe here and you have a hydraulic slope of like zero point, whoops, zero point zero one, we'll say, then for every foot of pipe, you are losing 0 0.01 foot of water column worth of pressure, right? So it's feet of water column per foot of pipe if you're using uh, US or meter to meter if you're using metric. Um, and so really that's what we're looking for. We wanna know how much head loss per foot of pipe are we losing at this velocity for this pipe material. And so we've got a little problem set up for you guys here. In this case, we have a six inch PVC pipe. It is 1,500 foot long. It has a volumetric fl flow rate of 0 0.8 cubic feet per second. And the pipe is flowing full. Now I'll go ahead and say um, C for PVC, in this case, in general, it's gonna be 150. That's what I'm gonna use. Now, we've pretty much gone over all the parts of this equation. Uh, if you are studying for the FE, 
I really would recommend that you pause the video, try to work this problem out, you know, give it your best shot, come back and then we'll work through it together. Okay, so hopefully that went well for you if you did take a, an attempt there. So what's the first thing we got to do, really? The first thing we got to do is we got to figure out what is the velocity. And hopefully that wasn't hard or it was obvious to you because really the velocity is something that you're going to be doing over and over again, you know, in the FE or in your career or anytime you're talking about flow, you've got to be able to figure out the relationship between velocity and volumetric flow rates. And so that is going to be your velocity is always your uh, volumetric flow rate divided by your area. And hopefully that makes sense. If you, if you think about a pipe, right, in the cross section, you know, you have an area here. If you were to look at it from its side, and if you think like, okay, so one, uh, velocity is one foot per second. Well, after one second, right, you've, you've moved a foot and you've basically created this cylinder, right? So then it's going to be one foot per second times A, right? And then, so whatever A is, it's going to give you Q. Okay, and so doing that in reverse is going to give you velocity. In our case, our so we have a six inch pipe. Our area, of course, is pi r squared. It's going to be pi quarter of a oops, quarter of a foot squared. And that's going to be 0 0.196 foot squared. And so our velocity is going to be our 0 0.8 cubic foot per second divided by the area we just found, 196 square feet. 4.08 feet per second. Okay, and so we already know our C value. We already know our K value, because that's always, we're using US, it's always going to be the same. Now we need to find our uh, hydraulic radius. And so our cross-sectional area, we already have it. We just found it, right? Since our pipe is flowing full, it's going to be this full area of our pipe. 0 0.196 feet squared. And our wetted perimeter, because again, it's a, a full flowing pipe, it's going to be the full perimeter, you know, that interior perimeter of the pipe. So we're going to have two pi R, which is a quarter of a foot, and that is going to be 0 0.125 foot. So that's our hydraulic radius. And then our slope, our hydraulic slope, is going to be. Oh, excuse me. Um, ex we're going to solve for our hydraulic slope, right? So we're going to put all of these things back into our equation that we had originally, which um, I guess I could write maybe up here that V equals KCRH. Uh, oops. 0.63 s to 0.54 all right so we're going to rearrange that so that we are solving for our hydraulic slope is which we're interested in and so we have 
our velocity over basically everything else with our k value in 0.318 we have our c value our roughness coefficient and then we have our hydraulic radius to the 0 0.6 Three. And so that's going to be 0 0.076. Invert the uh, coefficient, or excuse me, the exponent. And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.0086 feet per feet. Okay, do we have, if we can squeeze this in just on the bottom here. So once we have our hydraulic slope, we know we're losing a certain amount of head per certain amount of length of pipe, right? So now it should be relatively simple moving forward. Our Head loss due to friction is going to be length of pipe times our hydraulic slope, which is going to be 1500 foot of pipe, 0 0.0086 equals 12.9 feet of water. Which I think off the top of my head here is about, I think 33 feet of water is an atmosphere. So this is about a third of an atmosphere. So you're talking about five PSI. So if you're, if you're a designer and you're looking at putting in 1500 foot of pipe, six inch PVC, and you need 25 PSI on the downside, you better have around 30 PSI coming in, or you're gonna to need to probably use a, a larger pipe, you know, get that velocity down so that you don't have as much head loss. Okay, well, that is it for this episode. I, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking in there. I hope it was helpful. Uh, and obviously, I know you've seen YouTube videos before. You've heard this all before. Uh, but it really does help us out. If you want to subscribe to stay on top of the videos or a like or a comment, you know, get, in, get into the conversation here. We really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. So next, there's some stock video of a lady mixing chemicals in a beaker. So enjoy. Appreciate it. Thanks.